Are you familiar with the concept of evolution? Hey guys, I've just seen Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes and I can say that I like it. However, I have some thoughts. In this story, we follow an ape named Noah, whose family and village are taken amidst a grander plot, and now he's on a journey to get them back. The visual effects are impressive, and the opening act is an engaging, albeit familiar, start. In fact, many of the story beats brings flashbacks of Avatar, and its general tone feels like that of a big production Disney epic. While I like the adventurous story we start out with, I'm left wanting something more from the latter half. The visual effects have once again placed themselves in a tier above the others. The details in each distinct face of any species has always been a higher mark with the series, and here is no different. It's especially impressive when the water and fur effects trick me into guessing how much on the screen is real or not. The cinematography is outstanding, giving this movie an unmistakable grandiose feel with its wide shots and theatrical angles, sets, and lighting. Apes have an enormous amount of power and weight behind their every step and swing, and even a simple pat lands with a beefy thud. We are always reminded of their raw power. I remember thinking how the music takes me back to the jungly themes in movies like The Lost World, Jurassic Park. The bubbly, adventurous charm of much of the soundtrack kind of surprised me, and I think it works well here. Owen Teague does a solid performance as the new protagonist and the lens in which we see most of this new story. Noah is a clean slate. His naivety will be challenged as he clashes into the crosshairs of warring ideals that have plagued the world he's known since its rise. May is one of the more complex characters who says a lot more with her actions than she initially does in speaking alone. Freya Allen brings the character a coldness and intelligence that reminds me of the likes of Tess from The Last of Us. It's nice to see characters like Raka return. His banter between Noah and encouraging demeanor is a treat I could have gone more for in this movie. He's the last sense of what the original Caesar stood for. Finally, the new antagonist, the false prophet and madman Proximus Caesar, whose ravings in the trailers are a part of what hyped me to see the movie. He's imposing and believes himself to be idealistic. I see a sense of Immortan Joe. Kevin Duran gives a grovelly and heavy voice that lends itself well to Proximus' way of speeches. I would have liked to have seen more done with this character. While I like what I've seen, he feels simple in one note. I was hoping there would be more of an intriguing foil and maybe more of a long-term ideological conflict between him and Noah and possibly others. Instead, what we get is just the antagonist of the Avatar films. Director Wes Ball apparently pitched the film as Apocalypto with apes, which I definitely got that sense with certain story beats throughout the movie. Rick Jaffa and Amanda Silver are the recurring duo throughout writing this saga. They've worked together on the first two, Rise and Dawn of the Planet of the Apes, and have also worked together on Jurassic World. This time around for Kingdom, the duo is joined by Josh Friedman, who has also worked with them on a similarly massive production, Avatar and the Way of Water. The story for Kingdom takes some predictable beats if you're familiar with the movies of the genre or any of the past movies I've mentioned. I like the idea of all these different ideologies bouncing and butting heads off one another to create foils and tension. Although, I feel some of the character moments in the latter half are done in an unrealistically hurried fashion, and the plot becomes convenient enough to allow things to happen in the hero's favor in such a way that it just telegraphs ex machinas. Final thoughts and score. Overall, I really like the film, especially the segments with Noah, Raka, and May's interactions. I like the antagonist, but I wish the story would have allowed for more to be done with him. Parts of the film feel familiar, and its story isn't exactly groundbreaking, However, I enjoyed my time, and I enjoyed the movie, regardless. My official score for this movie is a 7.4 Eddie's out of Eddie's. I'm a sucker for sci-fi epics. The visuals are among the best the silver screen has to offer, and the adventure is an experience that's easy to recommend. Now, if you're still with me, I want to spend a moment to go over a few nitpicks and notes. There may be some spoilers, but I'm going to try to keep it as brief and non-spoilery as possible. Thanks for sticking around. Okay, nitpicks. The common enemy throughout the movie seem to always run into our protagonists and push the plot forward, even when they're not specifically looking for them. There is an editing mishap when a character is holding a gun behind their back while talking to another character, and the moment they have to use both hands, that gun disappears. It just completely vanishes from the scene. Later character foils seem to swing, and sometimes I'm unsure of exactly how we got to this current emotional state. Well, that's all I have for you today. I'm sure there will be two more ahead concerning the fall of the Planet of the Apes and the end of the Planet of the Apes. If any of what I've said up to this point interests you, then I would definitely recommend give this movie a watch. If you made it this far into the video, I thank you. Have a good day and take care. I'll see you next time.